Hello, Christ the King. Deacon Kyle here, finishing up a two-part series all about catechesis. And today we're going to dive into the CTK catechesis plan itself. So you'll, you'll recall that last week we talked about what is catechesis and work through the meaning, contents, history of catechesis and started talking about building a culture of catechesis. So if you didn't see that video, make sure you go back and watch it. Today, though, we're going to talk about uh, the catechesis plan that's been developed by the clergy team here at Christ the King. So we'll provide an overview of that plan and then walk through some of the specific elements of the plan, <clears throat> inclusive of formal, non-formal, and home components. And think in particular about where we'd like you to get involved in engaging with uh, our program of catechesis. <clears throat> and we'll conclude with a call to action. So by way of review, uh, we said last week that CTK aims to build a thick culture in both our parish and in our individual homes. <clears throat> a culture that has powerful catechetical force that has the ability to incarnate a way of being human that is distinctively Christian. That's what we're after when we talk about catechesis at CTK. And as I mentioned, CTK's approach to catechesis has to be inclusive, if it's gonna be truly holistic, of at least three modes of delivery, if you will. And that would be formal, non-formal, and home catechesis. <clears throat> so let's discuss each of these three elements. So first, formal catechesis. These are the ways in which uh, we are uh, primarily focusing on our catechetical approach to our parish. Um, and so you're already participating in one of them right now if you're watching this video. Um, but let's start with children's catechesis. Um, this is our ongoing class for five to 12 year olds on Sunday mornings. Um, so far, we've been using the Alfred Rex uh, Bible storybook curriculum uh, for all of our children. Um, as you'll note, though, it's, it's, it's a large group of children, and five-year-olds are quite different from 12-year-olds. And so we're in the process of looking at some different curriculum options for the younger children especially. Um, a group of Anglicans in Canada has put out a curriculum called God's Big Story, that we're interested in. Um, and so we're in the process of trying to figure out a way to split children's catechesis so we can have a more age appropriate curriculum for at least two groups of students, younger and older. We also have our catechumen class, which I teach. Um, so hopefully you're familiar with that. Um, this is something we offer on a yearly basis, roughly December until May. This is intended for older children, uh, maybe ages 13 to 18, as well as any adult converts uh, who are preparing for baptism. Uh, we offer this on Sunday morning at the same time of children's catechesis. <clears throat> uh, we currently have a nice group of young people who are working their way uh, through the catechumen class. Um, and the purpose of this is to prepare people uh, for baptism if they haven't been baptized already or as is more often the case to be confirmed. Um, so we're aiming for a confirmation date around Pentecost. The main text that we use uh, for this class is the Anglican Church in North America's new catechism to be a Christian. If you don't own a copy of this catechism, I'd highly recommend that you acquire one. Um, it walks through in particular um, how we should understand key aspects of the faith like the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, also touches a bit on the sacraments and a rule of life. <clears throat> it's a very, very helpful resource. Um, we don't want the catechumen class to simply be about uh, acquiring head knowledge, though, as important as that is. And so a couple of other elements that we've added into that class, um, clergy meetings. So all of the catechumens will meet with a member of the clergy team a couple of times through this process. But we also want your help um, as adult mentors. 
And so in particular, if your cell group has a catechumen in it, or if a cell group leader asks you to help out in being an adult mentor, uh, maybe of a catechumen in, a, in another group that has a lot of them, we'd really appreciate your help in this because we want all of our catechumens to have multiple relationships with adults in the church. Um, there's this uh, book going around currently called Sticky Faith. And the idea is that uh, children really need at least five uh, adults in their lives who are sharing their faith with them. That if you can get to five adults, uh, faith becomes the most sticky, if you will. Uh, and so thankfully parents, you know, gives you a couple already. Uh, clergy might get you to three. Uh, but we need some more people in the parish to come alongside them and get us to that number. So again, we'd appreciate your help with that if you're invited or asked to do so. And then finally, for formal catechesis, we have our adult catechesis class. That's what you're currently watching right now. This is an ongoing class for all of our mission members. Uh, all mission members are expected to watch these weekly videos. Um, I'm really happy with, with how they've turned out. Really grateful for the clergy team for uh, stepping in and producing these videos uh, alongside of me. And I hope that you've been blessed by uh, what we've been able to teach in these videos. So we do see this as an essential part of what we're doing as a parish and really would like you to try prioritizing watching these videos each week. And the nice thing about a video is you can watch it at your leisure at whatever time is convenient for you. <clears throat> in addition, we have the option of joining a Zoom discussion about the videos on Tuesday evenings. Um, that's been going really well. And so if you have a Tuesday evening that you're free, we'd love to have you participate in those conversations where we can go deeper on the topics presented in the video. So that's formally what we're doing for catechesis. <clears throat> but as we said, really everything we do has catechetical force to it. And so even if the primary purpose of something isn't catechetical, it may in fact uh, be serving a catechetical function. And so we'd put this category of things uh, under the label of non-formal catechesis. It's not primarily about catechesis, and yet it has a catechetical function to it. And the most important of these would of course be the Sunday liturgy. Um, so at CTK, we do a combination of morning prayer and Holy Communion from the 1928 Book of Common Prayer. And as a clergy team, uh, we say that all mission members are expected to attend every Sunday unless you're sick or out of town. And even if you're sick, remember you have the option of requesting communion to be brought to you by one of the members of the clergy team. Uh, we believe that being centered on communion is that significant, that if you can't make it, we would love the opportunity to bring you communion. So please reach out to a member of the clergy team if you're not able to attend on Sunday. Also cell groups. Uh, cell groups serve a catechetical function. Uh, in cell groups, we're cultivating community and spiritual friendships uh, within our designated geographic areas. These meet every other week. And again, we ask that all mission members uh, make participation in cell group a priority. Um, that's really the lifeblood of our church um, when we're not gathered together on Sunday during the week. Um, so please make that a priority. Uh, we also offer men's, women's, and young adult fellowships. So these are further opportunities for spiritual friendships and accountability that meet once a month. We encourage everyone to participate in these things, uh, but they're, they're not as central to the life of the church as, say, a cell group. Um, but again, we would love to have all of you participate in those ministries as well as you're able. Finally, we have the category of home catechesis. Um, even if you're participating in all of these things that we've just talked about, that doesn't come near to covering a majority of our days. Um, and so if we don't approach catechesis intentionally in our own homes, in our own families, um, we're not going to be catechized to the extent that perhaps we desire. So what are some ways that we can engage in this work of catechesis within our own families? Um, and for Anglicans, classically, first and foremost, that's been the daily office. So morning prayer and evening prayer as daily practices. 
Uh, within the Book of Common Prayer, there's an abbreviated form of family prayer that may be more suitable for families with small children in particular. Um, even starting as simple as, as saying the Lord's Prayer together at bedtime or in our cell group, uh, we're memorizing the prayer, lighten our darkness um, as a group practice uh, to then pray throughout the week. Um, starting small uh, might be a good way to, to approach this if you're not familiar uh, with morning and evening prayer. Second, we wanna challenge you uh, to keep the Sabbath that honoring and keeping Sunday as a day of rest, prayer, and family time is an important part of our spiritual formation. Um, we recognize this is difficult. This is countercultural. And so maybe there's some lifestyle adjustments you'll need to make uh, in order to carve out a whole 24-hour period uh, that you can devote yourself to uh, the Lord and to your family. Finally, we encourage you to engage with the church's calendar with the liturgical year. So this would encompass the seasons, feast days, and fasts of the church calendar. And as we move into a new building this summer, uh, we'll finally be able to gather and celebrate the church's required red letter days uh, together in our new building. Um, but again, are there ways within the home that we could mark out the season of Advent, the season of Lent, and so on, ways that we could engage our children, for those of us that have children, how do we engage our children in the practices and the rhythms of the church year? So hopefully that gives you some initial uh, grounding to think about how we engage in the formative work of catechesis within our own homes. Next, I wanna share a bit about some of the potential next steps for catechesis at CTK. Um, so first, as I mentioned earlier in this video, uh, we're hoping to divide children's catechesis into two groups, uh, a group of younger children and a group of older children, so each can receive more age-appropriate instruction. Um, I think that'll uh, shrink the amount of, number of children in each class, which will help each child get more attention, but also we'll be able to target curriculum better for where uh, each group of children is at. Um, it does require more teachers, um, and so we'll be reaching out to some of you uh, in the coming weeks as we try and set this up. Number two, we're kicking around the idea of hosting a summer trivia night uh, in which we can have a CTK catechesis trivia competition uh, to review and celebrate all we've learned in adult catechesis, have a big party. Number three, we wanna build out a resource list to help families engage their children in spiritually formative ways. Uh, we recognize a lot of families uh, have already been doing a lot of these things. And we wanna take the best ideas and tools that families have found and be able to share those with others in the parish. And finally, we're looking to develop opportunities for mission members who need to be confirmed or received into uh, the church, uh, those coming from outside of the Anglican tradition, uh, we're looking at ways to uh, make those opportunities possible and smooth. Um, so that's something that's on our radar for, for perhaps the summer or the fall of this year. So for our Zoom discussion on Tuesday, uh, I wanna kick off this uh, conversation about resources that we can share for home catechesis in particular. So what are some resources you would like to have uh, that you're looking for or that you need, but also what are some resources that you can share uh, to help others in our parish in this work of home catechesis? Um, also, do you have any ideas for how to improve or expand upon other elements of this catechesis plan? Um, this is not a comprehensive plan, uh, but hopefully it is a start and we're always open to feedback and thoughts on how it can improve. And finally, and probably most importantly, is how could you contribute to helping make this catechesis plan come alive in our parish? Um, it's all well and good to have a plan written down on paper, but if it doesn't actually translate into the lives of the people in our church, then it profits us nothing. Um, so what role could you play in helping make this catechesis plan come alive. 
So thanks for watching. The clergy team has enjoyed uh, the process of putting this plan together. Uh, we hope you find it encouraging and we look forward to continuing on this journey with all of you.